WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news. This is Park Center. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Park Center. My name's Ben, and joining me on tonight's show, we have Ashley. Hi. Jill. Hello. Nathan. I'm changing things up. It's now Kungaloosh, everyone. Aww. I was wondering who was going to do that. Aww. And Pete. Nathan already called it. Siva Co. Some things never change, my friends. As they shouldn't, if it ain't broke. All right, kicking off tonight's show after a, a, a two-week hiatus, we've got a, a good bit of new uh, one-week hiatus, good bit of news to go over here. Uh, starting with something relatively recent, we got a big post about what's coming to the Play Pavilion. Uh, so we we have we have a lot of things coming here. So we have split this up into two chunks. The first chunk we're going to try and focus on just the Zootopia part of this, which is it says down here. Uh, Nick and Judy from Zootopia will host an interactive game called Hotel Heist. You can see the entrance to this on the right side of the concept art, which right up here you can kind of see Hotel off to the right. You can't see the heist of it because I guess they wanted to keep some things a secret till they decided to announce it. Uh, but this is this is exciting for me. I am a big fan of Zootopia, and I'm really glad to see that we're get, it's getting a presence in the U.S. parks. Uh, I seem to remember there was something mentioned about it going to one of the uh, the Asian parks, but this is this is really cool. I'm I'm looking forward to this. What what do we think this is going to be though? I guess. Oh, you want me to go first? Oh, I was waiting for someone else to go first. I was being polite um, for one time. <laughs> all right, so I'll just say I'll keep I'll keep mine small. Um, this is not going to be the end all be all of Zootopia. We see the land going over to uh, our other countries. We have a feeling it might come to Disney's Animal Kingdom one day, but it's too big of a franchise to ignore. Um, having a billion dollar box office is just too big to ignore. So I like that they're kind of making it work. As we'll talk about this play pavilion is really about plugging things in that are like hot to the parks or hot in theaters at that time. Um, it's fun. You need Zootopia in the parks. We have no Zootopia stuff with, besides Nick and Judy walking around randomly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like I said, a billion dollar box office. You need something. So this is going to be a great little spot. Um, again, it's going to be a plug and play. Hopefully it lasts you know, a year, two years, three years. Um, not so much as that black box that we'll talk about later on. Mm -hmm. But good fix. Happy it's there. I still think it's coming to Animal Kingdom in the future. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet for everyone else. All right. All right, Nathan, now you can actually have your turn. <laughs> Gosh, I was, trying to, I was trying to let anyone else go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not using either of the show buildings for this. So they're not using Cranium Command's building. They're not using Body Wars' building. So what that means to me is this is small. And it's, uh, you know, I don't want to get my hopes up very high. Um, it's, you know, a, a sizable building in general, and I'm not saying that it won't have some space, but I just don't think it's going to be, you know, it's, it is not a dark ride. It is just so everyone understands it's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to think of like an equivalent size, maybe like a turtle talk with crush size thing. I don't know. Um, I'm interested because the title is very action oriented and I don't understand how that works with the space. So I guess we'll see, uh, how it all sort of pans out, um, as we hopefully, learn a little bit more about how they're using the old wonders of life pavilion yeah i'm definitely interested to see what this attraction is gonna like attraction i feel like we need to put attraction in quotes here because yeah. of the size but i'm almost <laughs> wondering if it won't be something a little bit more like uh pirates adventure or sorcerers of the magic kingdom where it's like an interactive game almost because that's mm. a, like nathan's totally right i hear the whole heist thing and i think action but maybe it's something where you're sending them around the whole, like that's sort of your hub and you're sending them out around the play pavilion or something. I don't know. I feel like logistically that might still be hard, but that's a, really honestly the first thing that came to my mind was something more like that for the attraction. That's a really good point. I was going to say just before we move to the rest, and yeah. Ashley hasn't even spoken yet, but is that everything in here is going to remind <laughs> you of somewhat of a turtle talk. Like that's it the does. size you're dealing with in all these little mini pavilion, like, many spaces inside of one pavilion. So that's what they're basically working with size-wise. So having them go on a scavenger hunt makes a lot of sense or something that's maybe only two or three spaces because this is a very small area inside mm -hmm. of just one pavilion. Ashley, do you want to get something in real quick here? I, 
just super quick. Just I get what everybody's saying. I think I guess when I read it, I almost pictured something like um, like in the innovations buildings, like a where's the fire? Yeah, is kind of what I thought of because that mm -hmm. wasn't very big, but it was interactive using that term loosely because sometimes it didn't work. <laughs> but I think something like that where it is interactive but small. At, I tend to agree. I just hope that it's it's good because Zootopia deserves something that they actually put time on and not just pigeonhole in there. Agreed. And somebody else who deserves more time in the parks is Edna Mode, uh, who is going to be... <laughs> she's doing very well for herself She's right doing now. very yeah, well. She's, she's right. it up. Glad. I love If her. anyone's made more of her presence, it's my girl EM. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she is, she is now taking over the Animation Academy, uh, which I guess makes sense. You have to know how to draw to be a, a fashion designer, at least some. Uh, no we've doubt. got character meet and greets for Wreck-It Ralph, Penelope, Joy and Sadness, Baymax, getting at least semi-permanent homes, if not fully permanent homes here. Uh, there's going to be an arcade. Uh, there's going to be a like a stage in the center of the pavilion. Uh, we don't know what's going on that stage yet. Like this is. There's still a lot of questions for what's coming here, but mm -hmm. it still seems it seems really cool. Like, does it really? Right? I, I talk talk me I down. Think, <laughs> I think this is going to end up being rather underwhelming. I think it sounds like I, I love the Animation Academy idea. I think they're going to have it where Edna pops up on a screen and tells AJ or DJ or whatever the genderless name is to definitely show everyone how to do yeah show everyone <laughs> how to do. Uh, some superhero costumes and draw those and i think that'll be great but like everything all the the meet and greets all this needs stuff i'm not saying it's a bad for them all to be here i'm just saying uh, i think they have these great concept art and, and i look at that building and i'm like i don't see it i can't see this looking as good in person as it does um in the concept art and i just don't think it's going to be as vibrant i think it's going to especially because they're not using any of those show buildings, it really is, and they need it, don't get me wrong, I understand all of it, but I think it's going to be more of a way station for little games and arcades. And art, like an arcade at Epcot is exactly what Marty Sklar always dreamed of. Um, <laughs> so, like, I don't know. It's totally fine in the sense of what it's supposed to be, but I, I think that they're, they're, they're pushing something that in the end is still going to look like the inside of the Wonders of Life Pavilion. Yeah, so I I kind of after looking at all of this, to me the first thing that it made me think was, okay, so they are turning this into the Walt Disney World junk drawer. Like Oof, this is where yeah. you throw everything that you don't know where else to put it. And I feel like it's going to be... Oh, and the other thing that I, I totally didn't understand is the press release that Disney put out. They say, this is an experience worthy of our bold vision for Epcot. <laughs> what? Like, what? A, when have you ever told us really what your bold vision for Epcot is? And how is this part of that? Like, oh, you'll see. That more sense. Disney. You'll see. No, no, more no. You robots. guys have it all wrong. All right. All these negative Nazis. Am... Go ahead, Ashley, and then I'll Ashley, go. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. You, Ashley. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I tend to agree. I, I do kind of like Edna and the animation. It is going to probably want. I just wonder how much they're going to budget cut it. Because the concept <laughs> art looks really great. There's going to be projections and things going on kind of everywhere. I know a lot of us, when the concept art first came out, kind of likened it to um, when Ralph goes to the internet and there's <laughs> everything going on. It looks really cool. Kids are going to like it. I mean, even if it is a junk drawer and it's just meet and greets and a little arcade, I mean, they've really kind of made no secret about the fact that this is going to be something for kids and parents that don't do thrill rides to still have something on that side of the park while everybody else is doing the thrill rides. So it doesn't need to be anything overly elaborate, but I just worry that they're gonna cheap out and then it's gonna look terrible on top of everything else. Yeah. And then it's mm -hmm. not going to work. It needs to at least look nice. It needs to look like they invested money in it. Yeah. I feel like that- I know we're over time. Just... Yeah, yeah, go. Okay, I was gonna say, I was gonna throw my quick two cents in because I'm on the opposite side of the three of these lunatics is that, listen, it's better than nothing, and you're also hitting a lot of different palettes at once. You needed something. You have the new Gardens of the Galaxy roller coaster. You have Mission Space, which is crazy town. Then you have Test Track, which is very fast for a lot of kids. When you want to go to any of these three rides, if not all of them, there's always those members in your group that say, what do I do? Just sit outside, do nothing? Now you have this big interactive area 
with four or five different things to ooh and ah at, figure something out, go learn how to draw, do a heist, do this. It doesn't have to be amazing, but it includes the whole fair family into this area of Epcot. You have these three thrill ride attractions. You need something to eat up all those people who are just, A, don't want to go on those rides, B, have small children, C, what do I do? It's keeping the entertainment factor awake and alive in this section of Epcot. It's a perfect fit. It's not amazing by any means. No one's saying this is going to be the best thing Disney's ever done, but it eats up all those people and it serves a purpose. And I can see this here, and I'm on Disney's team on this one. We'll talk about how I'm not on Disney's team in about six seconds. <laughs> well, since you're going to segue for me, why, why don't you tell me what this thing is, Pete? <laughs> all right, so here we got friggin' black box interchangeable dark ride um, coming at Hollywood Studios. So here's what you're getting, right? Disney has figured out we are awesome with projections now. They've mastered it. They could do it on the Tower of Terror. They could do it on Castles. They're going to do it at Epcot in their new show for Illuminations. They're doing them oh, wait, wait, everywhere wait, you yeah. look. I, I mean, they might be on the roofs of our buses soon. They might be everywhere on the windows. I mean, we've talked about all these new patents. Things are getting crazy. So this ride is just, hey, we have four walls. We have a ride vehicle. We can make this anything we want. You can literally project anything onto these walls. It's supposed to be a trackless ride vehicle, which is exciting. Don't get me wrong. People will like this. They will line up for it. It'll be the newest ride because they can change it on a moment's notice. But I'm just so upset. I'm not on the side where you don't bring what you're so good at is that fully immersive, interactive ride experience or attraction experience where you have the mix of screens and you have your audio animatronics. You have live actors or you have uh, uh, um, an experience on a ride vehicle that you cannot top because of theming this is just a black box they're going to project things onto it's going to be hip because it's going to always be changing and i'm just not a fan i just hope this isn't where we're headed i hope it's just a place filler for now and that's yeah. i'll leave it at that for you does, guys does anyone disagree with that I'll, I, I, do, I disagree I do. Okay. to an extent Go ahead, I don't think I like the idea. I don't think it's a fantastic. I mean, think about it. You could even potentially randomize it to the point with the technology where you could ride it twice in one day and have a completely different experience. Potentially. I'm not 100% versed on all the tech, but even being able to go one day and have an experience and then go the next day and have something completely different no, is very apart. appealing. Apart. It's just going on yeah. different rides. Not necessarily. Because they're going to plug but, in whatever well, their big IP I is. Think, so, like, if there's an IP, yeah. you, think they're going to be, you think they're going to be able well, to change the ride every single time? They can't even do that for Toy Story it. Mania. Toy Story Mania has been going in on for years, they years could. and they've never changed that ever. Not for a holiday, not for anything else. You think they're going to change <laughs> the black box multiple times <laughs> in one day? Are you out of your dang mind? Wow. Come on. I've, I've, never, seen seen I've never seen him like this. Wow. Pete's, Pete's about but, like, I, think, I think it's all in – the possibility that they could though and that's what i find interesting and i would hope that they would take advantage of the tech and use it as best they could to its full potential i don't Let think it sit should in the be middle the... go, go ahead, ahead finish well i was no, just gonna say ahead, i don't think it should be a major attraction i don't think they should make a big spectacle of it it shouldn't be like billed as an e-ticket attraction it needs to be on the smaller scale i would like to see it somewhere in like an animation courtyard Maybe where Little Mermaid is now, um, or somewhere like say, that. It I doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be in a major part of the park. But I do. It's it's interesting to me. I think they could do something great with it. Again, if it doesn't get budget cut and they use the tech to its full potential. All right, all right I'm gonna sit in the middle of all of this uh, really quickly. It uh, it's gonna be an e-ticket. It's gonna be an <laughs> e-ticket. Um, they're gonna treat it like an e-ticket. They are not gonna budget the way they should budget for it. Um, and they're not going to replace as much as they should. On that note, a company that would be responsible and do this correctly and maintain, I would say if you could have it where every time you ride it, uh, and it's room to room, right? So a, it's a trackless <laughs> ride. So you go you go from one room to the next room. And each time you go into those rooms, you go on and you're on the inside out one. And then the person right behind you, they enter the room right after you exit and it's – I don't know, uh, Toy Story. I don't know. My main point is, is you could have such randomization where the entire ride by individual sets of, of trackless cars is different for each one. Not only 
what is projected, but how the cars interact with that environment. That's very fantastic and very interesting. And you know, you could do one of those in each park, and it would be interesting and different. And and the the uniqueness is in that. The problem is, is Disney will never maintain something that calls no. for no. such no. intimacy. No. No. Um, so in that this, sense, is not changing. this is only changing when their movies change. There's a new IP. <laughs> it's not changing daily. It's not changing weekly. Newsflash. Pete, it's not changing Pete, monthly. There's a movie. There's a movie every month. So I don't know. Pete, honey. I, I think that's very possible. <laughs> but I'm gonna. Well, let's just oh. move on because Pete's gonna explode. <laughs> I'm gonna explode. Yep. By the way, oh, Ghost of Disney Penguins. It was fantastic. <laughs> Fair. Oh man, how fun would a penguin ride be? Anyway, uh, yeah, mo- moving to Star be. Wars before we get too distracted on this. Uh, so I, I assume we're going to be getting a lot of Star Wars news for the foreseeable future. So we're just going to kind of throw this on here as a placeholder for the Star Wars Weekly. Uh, so this week we had, uh, I guess the, the pa- over the past two weeks because we're a little behind, uh, we have some more information about how your, the build your own lightsaber experience is going to work and the gatherers, which are the, the folks who uh, will be helping you through that experience. We found this out through a... a, a a job listing essentially for a character uh, for one of these gatherers. Uh, we also got an in-depth look at the lightsaber hilts themselves, the kyber crystals, holocrons, all this stuff that's going to be going on inside of, of here uh, for, for building your own lightsaber and then some. Uh, and then we've also got some news that there will be extra, extra magic hours coming to Galaxy's Edge. Uh, so that you can have three hours to experience this every single uh, day that, that this offering is, is available. I am a little stunned by the, the three-hour extra magic hours. I figured that there would be something during the opening window, but I didn't think it would be three hours every day. Uh, do you think that's going to actually help with crowds at all, or is it still going to be a mess? <laughs> no. Mess. Yeah. It's still going to be a mess. Yeah. I mean... That I'm I'm surprised. I'm glad that they're doing it. I think maybe a couple more hours in the morning and the evening would help a little bit more. But and maybe somebody can correct me, but I read the article several times. I guess I didn't understand what's making these such special extra extra hours other than the fact that there's just three of them instead of an extra morning hour. Can anybody help me understand what makes them so special? My, no, my it's, you need to go to Star Wars. The extra yeah. So whoever branded this, the extra extra is the same people who branded VI pass holder and who also designed <laughs> okay. the new. Well, I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not crazy. No, it's then. a terrible branding. because I was like, why? Why are these so extra special? It's just yeah, more just hours. Yeah, just call them extra magic hours. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're just extending so extra magic yeah. hours because you're yeah. making it or, sound like there's something extra. I mean, I don't know if the whole. Like, is the whole park open though? I think the idea is that only Star Wars is open at that time. I, I get the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Well, then that's yeah, because that's what I'm saying. It's an extra. It's at the other it? parks too. Okay, all right, let's exactly. back up. Let's back up six steps, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> in California, for the grand opening, if you have a reservation, then you enter into a lottery to get in for an allotted set of time because that's how busy it's going to be out there for the grand opening out in California with all your locals and everyone from the whole world coming to see Star Wars. Here at Walt Disney World, there's too many hotel rooms. There are way too many hotel rooms to do that. It would be impossible. So what they're saying is, hey, book a room on property because we're exceptionally slower than normal because everyone waited to the last minute to book their trips because no one knew when this land was gonna open. Is that now it's saying, if you're staying on property, we're not gonna give you one or two hours. We're gonna give you three extra hours as long as you're staying on a Disney property for these parks. And that's where they're trying to pull people in in the Orlando area because they're getting the second opening and also they don't have all the locals and everything going on in California where it's a complete cluster out there. Nathan, are you blacked out for your Florida no. AP? I don't, okay. I don't think so. I don't think I'll be. I mean, you can change that. No, you're not blocked basically. out, but you're not going to be able to get there at 6 a.m. It's only the extra, extra magic hours of a hotel guest. So that's how they get people to no, book. No, no, I understand. I'm just hotel. saying at that. Yeah. Like in Disneyland, they're blacked out. But right. I didn't know well, if they course. were. Of course, that's a whole different animal. Out there is all locals and APs. I mean, I'm a New Yorker right. and I'm an AP on, on Disney World. You have much more space. Um, but now they're going to make you stay on property. So that's how they make their money. It's me and Nathan could go on opening day, 
but we don't get the 6 a.m. We have to wait till 9, and at that point, it's going to be five-hour lines for everything because everyone staying Which in a Disney fine. hotel gets yeah. thrown in the place. So now I'm looking at a hotel on my birthday. So I can get in at friggin' six in the morning. Fantastic. See, that's see, I just disagree. I don't. I wouldn't do that. Like, I I don't think most locals will, and I don't think they're worried about locals for it necessarily. No. I think they're just no. they're trying tonight. to get yeah. you to get your butt here early. Hey, you in Illinois, come please. I know half of this stupid land is not open yet, but <laughs> still come, and we'll give you three hours to do half of what we told you you'd have to do anyway. So yeah, I mean, it's a. It's just them desperately trying to to reach numbers that it are far under what they thought they would be at this point. I just want to, and so. to back that up, I just want to share that we polled our Wigs members this week, and a full 36% of them said they would go once the crowds die down in Galaxy's Edge, even if that's a year or two away. A third right. of our Wigs members, yep. who are yep. Disney mega fans, said, eh, I'll go when agree. the crowds die down. Yeah. And they will. They will oh, die they, down. They certainly will, yeah. I think that this is getting way too much hype, um, and I think also that the reason that they delayed Runaway Railway was because they want the Star Wars hype to continue, and when that dies down, you reopen Runaway Railway, you get that whole boom the entire time, but that's just my I opinion. think they really messed up by not opening everything in Galaxy's Edge at once and not waiting for that. I really think that- Are you crazy? Why people not have people- <laughs> Well, then forget it. I'm going to wait until everything. Disney, Disney was like, how do we make more money from this Star Wars land? Wait a minute. What if we, we open it twice? Well, I, think, that's, that's I think that was their intention, but I think it's going to come back to bite them. Because like Jill said, a lot of people, what? and I'm, kind, I'm in that boat. Why am I going to go and fight the crowds in August and go through all that nonsense and craziness when I have to turn around and come back six months or however long later to do it all over again when Rise of the Resistance opens. Yep. Why? Why That's not why just I'm have saying. to do it again? Is it I actually kidding. think we're crowds are all going to be there multiple times. It's not like... Call me crazy. Like well, crowds, I mean, that's... But... Crowds ben, you need to write this much, shit. Much, much lower, lower than... than the <laughs> We're way we are. We've my, gotten my, my apologies Sorry. to Phil Hartman. We You've all been hey, five minutes left. No one cares about Phil Hartman. No, 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 I want to talk about Phil Hartman. I want to talk about Phil Hartman. I do. All right. Well, you'll be the only one talking. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on no to Magic cares. Bands, though. No one we'll, we'll try and make this a little bit briefer it. so we can catch up on some lost time here. Uh, you can upgrade your Magic Bands now. Uh, or not now, but soon, uh, you'll be able to upgrade your Magic Bands. Rather than getting just the plain solid color ones, you can upgrade to a whole bunch of different designs on your Magic Band going forward, as long as you're uh, reserving that Magic Band and making those choices far enough in advance that Disney can get them shipped out to you. Uh, I think this is pretty sweet. Uh, I, it's something that I've wanted for a long time, even if it does have a $15 upcharge associated with it. Like, I don't use the solid color ones anymore. It's yeah, not it's a about thing time. that's helpful. That's like this yeah, well, a good idea. less than. I mean, most of them are what twenty bucks. Uh, so you're it's, the, yeah. It's like you're no. So the base price like is twelve twelve ninety nine for the colors. Then like the right. middle ground ones is like there's like a fifteen. Then there's the twenty two. Right. Then there's like the thirty two. So most of these are the fifteen. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the yeah. 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 You're, you're probably if you wanted something besides that. that's like the baby powder pink and. <laughs> they had a Pete making a return, but uh, no, the main the main base I think like ten colors are twelve bucks, and then you have the extended solids which are like fifteen ninety nine or something like that. Then you have some designs that are like twenty bucks. Then you get into like the limited edition which range from twenty seven to thirty two ninety nine, without a, just any discounts. With your discounts, you get a little more. I love magic. Yeah, this Can is... I just say, and then I'll, yeah. I'll get out of this. I, I people always say like, do you collect anything? Is there anything you're into? And I'm like, no, I don't do any merchandise at all. I don't do t-shirts. I don't do stuffed animals. I don't do pins. I don't do anything. But I love <laughs> limited edition magic bands because they're fun and they're, like, functional. So, like, yeah. I get to wear it out. Like, I love wearing my Epcot 35. I just got the new Hollywood Studios 30th. And they do cool stuff when you enter parks or go on rides. Like, my Epcot 35, oh, whenever you scan it, None it of says, these in question like, yeah. No, I'm just right. saying, no, these don't. But, like, just to have a magic band, like, when I scan my Epcot one, it says reflections of reflections of and Earth. I, I, I know it's, it's my favorite amazing <laughs> it is it makes me happier in my happiest place it's amazing yeah so it's totally true. for magic pan upgrades and let people have fun with it and if they knew these existed this is another way where disney can make extra money and i am totally okay with it 
Um, so, Pete, I hate to rain on your parade, but Disney Stop is it. apparently doing away with the special activations. Like, no. even if you have a band that currently has a special activation, Wait, it will stop working. Yeah. No, where is this? Tell me they don't have to figure it out. out. They're broken yeah. half the time. That's No, yeah, they're broken half the time, but it's not work. Rumor. No, but it's yeah, a rumor, and it doesn't work half the time. People will do the right thing. This is why you have to believe in Disney. It breaks sometimes. Like, everything at Disney, it breaks. It's gonna work. It's gonna it's not work. Supposed I, to, I'm though. gonna put my That's... magic band on the maintenance report. I don't want to talk anymore. You guys have to talk about this. I love magic bands. You guys talk, but it's gonna work. I love it. It's easy money. It's easy money for D- Disney. Is. I don't have much else to say about yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's it's a smart move. It's about no. five years too late, but sure. Oh, totally. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. No. Yeah. As soon as they started doing these, you should have been able to order them ahead of time. Yeah, I don't know why you weren't. All right, moving on a little early to try and save some time. Uh, Toy Story Land is going to be getting another restaurant because we needed to have one in Star Wars Land but couldn't fit it in. (laughs) So uh, Roundup Rodeo Barbecue is coming to Toy Story Land at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Don't ask us where it's going. We don't know where it's going. We just know it's going. It's right behind Woody. It's going to the right of Woody. We know this. Oh, we do know this now? Okay, I don't think we knew that. We kind of do. Oh, here it is. When you walk in, you see Woody welcoming you. It's going right behind Woody to the right. Is, I think so right behind up, Rock and Roller Coaster. Is, yeah. Isn't that eating up some uh, some buildings that are used for like costuming and stuff right now? Probably. No. Uh, so so yes. this is what's supposed to yeah, connect. One is... Go ahead, Ashley. Yeah, you actually. Well, I was just gonna... well one apparently is used for um, a break room for costuming, is my understanding. Ah. And I'm not 100% sure what the other building is used for. It's used for something backstage, and it is in use. But I know for sure one of those bungalows is is, um, is cost, and they are not happy about that at all because their <laughs> break room is going that way. What a so, shock! But they're to be honest, really I'm hoping, hoping that this is another it's... way they finally connect the dead end now, especially with the new Cars attraction back there, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Oh yeah! But they need to connect. Rock and roller coaster area with Toy Story Land, where it's not two dead ends, where they can kind of make that loop. And this looks like it's taking up that space where they're pushing it a little bit more, where you only need another 50 feet, and you can connect those two areas without going from rock and roller coaster and then the 45 minute walk all the way around the Toy Story Land. You can go <laughs> and connect. Yeah, but so, no, there wouldn't be any. Say what you will about there. the rest. Uh, the, huh? the, the, where's the transition between Toy Story Land and Star Wars? Are you kidding me? What? We'll, we'll talk transitions another time. Right. They can Those figure transitions Disney out. To care about. I'm talking right. about continuity. Um, you guys can talk about the restaurant. Right, which Disney hasn't um, cared about in like five plus years. Yeah, yeah really. This is a BS thrown together a last minute restaurant. <laughs> um, I'm not, it, it, to be honest, that's all I'm saying. I, I want other people to talk because I feel like yeah. I've been speaking a lot. I just hope this I is one step closer idea. connecting those two lines now go ahead joe I, I think it's a good idea they certainly need like a they need more food in toy story land and b um they're definitely going to need more food once star wars opens mm. uh i hope this is like a trails end sort of situation i think that would be awesome um, i think it would be a great place to do um toy story slash pixar character dining that would be a swell idea and would be a real draw for kids who are all already into Toy Story Land and Buds and Woody and all of that, especially with Toy Story 4 coming soon. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I mean, dining at studios is generally kind of not the best in the world. Uh, we just, I don't, actually, some of you guys were there. I don't know what your dinner experience Except for Brown Derby. Derby was like. I was kind of like, wow, this place used what? to be really impressive. and It's amazing. Is, what happened? Wait. Uh, Brown Derby is one of the best restaurants, I think, on Disney property. It is. Unless um, I miss so something at our in the last table, year. We had to send two of our eight entrees back. Oh, good. The, oh, did you really? The, we missed the that. It so dry that it was, like, crumbling. And the Oof. steak, which was asked for medium rare, was, like, literally raw and cold in the middle. Ooh. Ooh, sounds oh, delicious. Yes. That's and, unfortunate. Um, it, we were all, the rest of the table was done eating before they brought either of them back. Oh, I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was. Well, it that's was upsetting. Nice. Let's that's not nice. assume that's the regular. Also, Jill, you've also sent three parades back to be redone and sent back out. <laughs> <laughs> 
thinking I, I, what? I care about quality, <laughs> Carney. God forbid. God forbid. You're I You're like, this is not <laughs> what I ordered. Send it back and start over. I did not order this parade. I want a new one immediately. Oh. Well, I don't. I don't think anybody ordered this 3D show either. Philhar Magic is now uh, inside More Disney's California day. Adventure. Book your fast sort passes of. now. It's uh -huh. it's sort of in there. It's it's cut in a thousand pieces and thrown in. Well, yeah. I don't know. Is there. the screen better? Is it HD? Because ours looks like garbage now. But, um, yeah, this is a bummer. Because like I love this show and I want it to do well, and they have really put a you know, a square peg in a round hole because this mm -hmm. thing does not look good in there. It doesn't fit. They try to use the side panels. The big difference for people who haven't seen it um, is they don't have any enough space for the screen, so they've cut it, uh, and you get the middle, and then sometimes on the two sides they have basically screens that they um, add sort of that extra material or aspects of that extra material to. Um and Donald, at least last time I checked, Donald is not um, coming out of the wall. And he might not ever. I don't know. I think there's hope, but I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. So um, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know why this is there. Um, they are, you know, this will last till Marvel and then they'll use something else yeah. um, or figure out what they want to do because they just need stuff there. Gosh, California Adventure, you're the worst. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> to I answer one of your questions, I don't understand uh, they, why they didn't bring back the Muppets. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Ben, what oh, were you sorry. saying? To answer one of your no. questions, the 3D quality uh, apparently is much higher because the projector in California Adventure is newer. Is new? So there's that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely needs that. To Ashley, you were going to say something, though. Well, I was just going to say, I don't understand why they didn't bring back Muppets. Yes. I mean, a lot of things that I saw where people were like, yeah, that was all right, but I really, it made me miss Muppets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have the tech to fill hard the way it should be with the extra screen room and everything, why not just bring back Muppets? You probably, they probably Even if you had to... animatronic stuff. That's probably why. I mean, they definitely yeah, do all of that. Maybe, but I. Even if you bring Tronics, I think you would have had better success and an easier time bringing that back, even if it was, you know, Instead of slightly haphazard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still would have fit better. And the show's what? Yeah. No. 10 years old? 15 years old? Something like that. It's, it's pretty old. Early. Yeah. It's not older. And um, why would they move so it and does not? Anyone, I was going to say, does anyone else. Yeah, does anyone else think this is like kind of get a get a redo? That's why it's in both places. Now they can upgrade both at the same time, copycat it, because they're not bringing no. the fifteen year old attraction. I think this I might you so. might see with how fast they can do things on screens now. I don't, I'm just saying, we'll see. I don't know. So you, think you just another, told us like that it takes them months and months and months to do stuff on on screens. No, no, no. I never so. said that. It takes them. It doesn't take them that long. That's when things get redone. Is in months right. and months and months. Yeah. Not that it takes I, them that I, long. I think they would have just There could be a whole new Philhar Magic in the mix. There could be a whole new Philhar Magic in the mix. And now they have both theaters up and running. And now it's easy to plant it into both. I'm just saying it could be an easy new story or new upgrade or refurbishment. Not going to happen now, but in the next 12 months. Maybe. That's fair. Maybe. We shall see. My theory. It's just rumors. All right, that, that is going to bring this episode of Park Center to a close. Now, this is normally the part where we would go into the post-show for our WIGS members, which will be referred to our patrons as Patreon. What? WDWNT, do the thing. Uh, but we didn't talk at all this week about Stage 89. We have an entire part two to this show for you folks, and we're bringing in everybody for this. So we're gonna have a few words from uh, from a couple other shows that we have on this network that we recommend you check out, and we will be right back with part two of Park Center, Stage 89. We will be right back. Dream Finders is WDW News Today's podcast all about the creative culture surrounding Disney parks. Curious what it's like to read poetry about the Haunted Mansion? Well, we've talked to someone who has. How about what it takes to actually build a Disney castle? We've chatted with a guy who did just that. Authors, Imagineers, dancers, actors, photographers, filmmakers, and a whole lot more have all stopped by to chat about how Disney has inspired their artistic work. Dreamfinders, 
Episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher. Ride Rehab is the podcast of ridiculously reskinning, refurbishing, and even removing Disney attractions, shows, areas, and parks. Can we cram Star Wars or Marvel into anything else? Just listen and find out. Visit RideRehab.com to start listening now. That's RideRehab.com. WDWNT Nerd Alert is the podcast that encompasses all things Marvel and Star Wars in a fun and entertaining format. On each episode, we take a look at the latest news, provide reviews for the latest feature films, inform you about what is going on in the comic book world, and discuss and debate original topics pertaining to the worlds of Marvel, Star Wars, and beyond. Find us on various podcast applications by searching for WDWNT Nerd Alert. The WDW News Today podcast is the one that started them all. Join us for comprehensive history segments, heated debates, epic countdowns, and more from the Disney theme parks around the globe. Just search for WDW News Today in whatever podcast service you choose. Last but certainly not least is WDWNT's premiere show, WDW News Tonight. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. for a live, weekly audio and video show that combines the latest headlines, comedy, trending vacation topics, call-in games, and in-depth discussions to bring Disney fans a one-of-a-kind two-hour program covering the Disney parks. If you can't catch the show live, you can always watch it later on YouTube or listen to it through your desired podcast service. Hey. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry for the delay, folks. Oh. Uh, I pressed exactly the worst button that I could have, uh, and they will take a moment for us to get the show back. Uh, hang on, one moment, please. And we will be rolling again. Just hang, hang tight. I promise we're still here. Did you press the history eraser button? Uh, I, I might I have pressed that. I can't see everyone. Yeah, we can't see everybody, but uh, oh, I do no. promise that uh, you can't can be heard on right now. So if everybody wants to start chatting up things a bit, uh, you certainly can. Uh, who who all's here? We got a group, y'all. Hello. 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 So, um, so they like, might only have seen the last chat. Bet. Who's who's not uh, who's not on Park Center that's here? Yeah, that's <laughs> actually good. Wait, time question. out, time out. Let's do this. Hey, um, Ben, before we introduce everyone, um, for those who are in the YouTube chat, yeah. I was the only one moving because I was in the VMix call, and I just moved to Hangouts. We should probably check if they could see us because I don't think we're live on YouTube. I don't know what's happening. Uh, the, the video is not currently working correctly. The audio is I'm working on fixing the video right now. Give me just a moment, and yeah, that will be taken care of. Um, okay. I know exactly what happened. I just need to rewire a couple wires uh, because, of course, I do. Hey, look, there's there's me. Uh, I'm way off center. Um, let me come on. Let's make this work. We're so close. They can hear us. They just can't. They can. Yet. You that can do it. You can do it. <laughs> We're not going to make it. <laughs> We're going to make it. We're not gonna make left, it. right, left. For those, um, <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of viewers. It's coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're real close. All right. We're... I think I'm almost there. Oh my gosh! Come on. Why did you do it again? You did the exact I'm... same thing again. Oh, anyway, man. instead of us not talking, <laughs> <just standing laughs> sorry. Around, then you do stuff. I'm gonna yeah. lead the conversation. So Nate, say your I'm name. Tom is not part of Park Center. We're in the last set, segment. Hi, Who's I'm Tyler. I'm from before. Ride Rehab and also oh, Park Center and the RPG. Oh. And How's everyone? Canada. And and I'm from Canada because that's relevant. <laughs> and Rob, I believe you are the only other one who's not been a part of Rob, this. Rob, yeah. Rob, Rob, yeah. Rob, Rob, yeah, Rob, yeah, Pete, Pete. Introduce yeah, yourself, I, Rob. I, I was the this one. Is radio, guys. I was the one who spent the uh, spent the better part of the last year trying to make that News Tonight logo, the new one. So, <laughs> right. do, right. do I the graphic design and yeah. 
I like that Tyler sent me a text message of how sexy I am on the screenshot. <laughs> I told you not to yeah. say that out loud. I don't know. <laughs> yes. All right, Shout out to our Sorry, sorry for Tyler the delay. I'm getting the video, but we're actually here now. <laughs> what? I love, I love Tyler and Micah. Yay. I love Tyler and Micah. Yay. Who's Tyler and Micah? Anyway. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Where were we? I will say, Ashley, your, your camera is currently uh, turned off. I, but... Yes, I will be right back. Okay. I'm still oh, here. I guess the camera is having exploded. a moment. So. Sorry about that. Put a shirt on, Ashley. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's you. You <laughs> Pete. See, for those of you who aren't behind the scenes, Pete often changes his shirt before the show. And so, also, too, he has guys, for all those who are just part of this, we don't really have like chaotic fun like this on our post show. We take questions, we make fun, we have fun, we shout out people out. We're having a good time at the post show. Yeah. So if you're not a Wigs member, Ben, tell them how to become a Wigs member. Come on, Ben. <laughs> I've, all right, all right. I mean, I plugged it a little bit earlier, but uh, it is over at patreon.com slash WBWNT. For as little as $2 a month, you can get access to our post shows where we do all of the, the crazy fun stuff after after Park Center. Uh, you can get access to News Tonight's post shows where they also do some silly fun stuff. Uh, the entire podcast backlog is on there as well. A whole bunch of other perks. You can take place uh, take part in our, uh, our weekly polls that Jill mentioned earlier in the show. It's great, and you help support these shows and make them possible and worth producing. So that is patreon.com slash WBWNT. And you right. will be part of a prestigious and awesome community. Indeed. And also, yep. you would have gotten fun stuff if you were with us this week, but if you weren't there, we're mailing you all the fun stuff you missed. So make sure you are a part of it. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So who wants to start talking about yeah. Stage 89? What's yeah. Stage 89? <laughs> So uh, let's start with the do first Do we want to go day by day? Yeah, or? yeah let's start off with Friday. Can we so... put us in the Hollywood squares? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't have enough time to get the squares together. Oh, uh, but start, okay. starting off with Friday, uh, that was the uh, that night we did the Avengers Endgame watch. Now, no spoilers. Yeah. First off, Hang no spoilers. On. We're not Hang doing the second. spoiler thing. We Wait, missed I'm dinner gonna before a... that. No, oh, no, 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 Yeah, we had a staff dinner. No, yeah. No. All right, move on. Are we not going to talk can, about that? We can no, talk a little about the not. staff dinner, I guess. Oh, um, we went to, where do we go? 50s primetime? Yep. Yes. Um, I have a picture I can share on my screen. Yes. Uh, give ben, me I think one you can switch second. Over, uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to screen share through Hangout so we can see it. Yep. No, I have a picture I can share on my screen, but no one wants to see it. Click on, um, just text us. There we go. And, and it'll show for everybody. You're in charge, Ben. Oh, so whatever you click go. will be the. Wait, main wait, wait. There's one of Tom. I see one. It's in the queue. Okay. <laughs> there's one of Tom. Just click on that screen. Oh, that's beautiful. So unsurprisingly, oh, I love it. yeah, that's amazing. That's no, how our dinner go. at 50s prime time went. That was amazing. so yes, so fun. They they gave us shakes with paper straws that were too thin <laughs> for you to even drink out of. To which we were like, this is garbage. I would and like then... a dollar if I have to hear any more about paper straws out of anyone's mouth in this company. <laughs> I'm done with it. Paper straws are the future. Y'all are Luddites. Move on. Paper straws are not the future because they don't work. Okay, you can't put a paper straw inside a plastic lid that has the four still little screens, like, corners. Oh, sorry. Ben, change camera. Let's not forget. Some one time somebody how... said the horse-drawn carriage is better go. than There's a another car. Screen oh, that's a big Yay. Um, Aww. Like, you can't put a paper straw inside that plastic lid because the the lid pinches the straw, and then you literally can't drink through it anymore. Like mm -hmm. they need to oh. solve that problem. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll so what they need space. to do is Disney merchandising. You need to just start selling the reusable metal straws or reusable plastic straws yes. so that people will buy them and have the option to buy them. I can't believe and they don't sell metal straws solved. in the parks. Like that blows my mind that they, they will. have it's, not it's taken coming. advantage of that. You know it's coming. Yeah. And that's how our dinner went. <laughs> yeah. That is how our dinner went. In game so was fun. Straws yeah. garbage and then the waitress started calling Tom garbage and it was amazing. <laughs> It was, and we all, and it, all of WWNT staff lived vicariously through the waitress at 50s Prime Time. <laughs> yep. Somebody actually got away with yelling at Tom. It was amazing. Yep. So 
Right. Guys, we're seven minutes in. We haven't got up to an event where people were at. Besides, yeah. <laughs> well, we're seven minutes we in. We're seven minutes in, and we have ten, mo- ten minutes left. We have to, let's talk That's about the movie theater. Oh, I'll talk okay. about the movie theater. Movie oh, theater was awesome, um, guys. So, yeah, so then was Avengers, Avengers Endgame, which was great. No spoilers. But but wonderful you, being able to I'll share you a, full recap right a theater now. full of <laughs> Am I getting crazy, Wait. Bill? Or is everyone just talking <laughs> over everyone each other? Everyone is talking over um, everyone. Just guys, I think there's a serious delay. I don't know who's who. But either I'm Thanos, a professor of communication, Thanos, and you've all <laughs> lost communication. Wait, you didn't invite your film professor? I had no idea. Or Thor looks like whatsoever. Thanos and Thor have a body like this. No! Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. We're gonna get yes. censored on YouTube. No, no, no. But that's your only spoiler you get. Oh. Someone looks as good as me in that movie. And it's Thanos <laughs> or Thor. And that's all you get. And we rented out a theater. It was awesome. We had a little bit of problems up front. Here, I'll recap it faster so you guys can move on to the good stuff. Here's what happened in the movie. We rented out a whole movie theater. It was amazing. We sold it out. Awesome. No one else in the whole world realized that Avengers were opening that night. So we, WWNT, rented out an entire movie theater, sold tickets, had a great time. Um, we sold it out, 110 seats. We had a lot of laughs. I missed most of it running to get drinks for everyone. Um, but it was your second time seeing it, correct? It was normal. My first time seeing oh. Avengers Endgame. My second time oh. seeing an Avengers movie. Um, oh. But oh. it was fantastic. Anyway, that's what happened Friday night. We had a great time. We laughed. We cried. We that's applauded. Good. Um, everyone loved the movie, and then Saturday happened. Take it away, this person. <laughs> <laughs> so Saturday uh, was our, our Dream Flight game. Uh, so we had two games this weekend. This is the first one of them. Uh, and this one involved both Magic Kingdom and Epcot, folks moving around between parks, doing crazy tasks, and getting a uh, passport book stamped. And this passport book was sweet. Uh, while other people are talking, I'm going to see if I can dig mine up real quick and uh, show it off to people. But like this, oh, yeah. this was fun. I, I had a blast with this, and I've, I wasn't even playing it. Oh, Jill, do you have one? Or... I got one right here. Oh, there, there we go. go. Here's our Dream Flight book. It's backwards, I it think. It was so all good. People. I'm sorry. No, 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 it looks right. It okay. looks right. So we had uh, a little welcome page, and then every stop in the game had its own page in um in the book so you went to all of these different stops and we had little stamps that matched the little stamps up here so when you completed the stop we would give you a little stamp and uh it sent you all around magic kingdom it sent you all around epcot uh we put people through their paces and we had some really amazing teams that just totally kicked it and like finished on time finished early got through every stop went through all the uh resort hotels on the monorail loop too it was pretty awesome and the wild thing is that is a official U.S. passport. You can use it anywhere you want. <laughs> you can. This will get you into like every other country in the world. Yep. So it's like real ID. Awesome. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Global entry. But it bucks. won't get you into studios if you're bringing in too many things. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh gosh. And Dream Flight is the game where all the Canadian jokes started for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I use well, jokes when in they quotes. officially started. <laughs> because jokes were, oh, you don't have that in Canada well, anytime. I just didn't know anything anyone else was talking about. Yeah, that in case fun. you haven't figured it out by now, we, we do, in fact, pick on staff members relatively frequently. So. <laughs> yes. All right, moving to, uh, to Sunday, uh, which uh, was, this was great. The, the Hollywood that was, this was our presentation that we did. Uh, with a bunch of folks who actually helped work to build the studios. And this, so, some of these talks were, were great and insightful, and some of them were, no, I think uh, all were interesting. Uh, you guys aren't very good at selling something that we've done. It all yeah, was good, uh, and it was, it was a good experience. And, uh, yeah, no, like uh, some of the speakers were a little more sporadic than others, but they had a lot of interesting things to say. Um, it seems that... We are now looking at uh, an empty chair. No, you're fine. Um, you're fine. Uh, no, but we had uh, Brian Collins, who is a show writer for four years for Imagineering, did lots of Hollywood studios. Um, he's a good, I, I would say, a friend of the company. He's been at a couple of our events. Mm-hmm. Um, a really great guy and had some good things to say. And then um, we had um, oh, Jack Gillette and um, Jim Mulder. And both of those guys are, are not known necessarily 
uh, in the community. Um, uh, and Tyler is now trying to do the um, Jack Gillette. Uh, uh, oh, right. um, I oh. think actually our event may have been the first time they actually did any kind of panel discussion like oh, that. Oh, that's so cool. They yeah. were really interesting. Um, they were special <laughs> effects uh, for a lot of the shows at Hollywood Studios. And special effects guys are technical and interesting. Um, and they have things to say that you don't normally hear. So that was fun. And there's like a, a quality of like not have, having done it a thousand times. And, mm -hmm. had, you know, where, where I felt like uh, our next speaker, Ron Logan, who uh, is, did a lot of the shows at Hollywood Studios and, and oh, Broadway stuff. Oh, loved Ron, Ron, Ron uh, Logan. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Yeah. Loved his hold message. on, hold on. Loved I'm not Ron Logan. <laughs> hold on. Give him a minute. <laughs> Ron, uh, Ron, on the other hand, had been doing. He'd done a lot of these speeches. And he's a he's a professor, so um, he had sort of a, a like a like he'd done these speeches before. And uh, whereas I would say the special effects guys, this was sort of their their first time, and they had insight and sort of thoughts. And it was nice to have that sort of conversation um, with them. It actually felt like a conversation opposed to sort of a lecture. Yeah. It really or, did. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. And then Ron was interesting too. He showed us a lot of footage from uh, Ron Earth. Logan said Star Wars should have been a fifth gate. Yep. Yeah. Yes. The entire thing was... was worth it to hear Ron Logan say that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So he's he's um, an interesting guy for sure. Eighty I, years old. I didn't realize how old he was. He's eighty wow. years old and kicking. And, it, and a Disney legend. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I I think you guys are underselling the food because the food yeah. was it was really good. Uh, yeah. I actually that stole a little. I mean, stole uh, took a little bottle of Tabasco. <laughs> Those uh, were the cutest the table. things. Yeah, right, because they were so cool. But like that and the desserts, like the carrot cake cookies. The, oh, I man. was bartering for those mm -hmm. carrot cake cookies. I was like going around. I I like <laughs> sidled up to Nicholas Cicero, who had two on his plate, and I was like, "Hey, Nick, you gonna eat those two carrot cake cookies?" <laughs> I had I taken think are, one bite, and I'm like, the rest is yours. And you're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're burying the lead, though, because we had a very special guest. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Was, yep. we had, um, you guys, wait, can I say it? I showed up at 3 o'clock. It was pretty <laughs> exciting. Yeah. I was and a I got a picture taken with Pete, and he signed my autograph oh, book. Right. And, I was there at 3 p.m. I wasn't yeah. really talking about that kind of a rodent. What I was talking about Whoa! was Mickey Mouse. Whoa! Wow. Mickey Mouse. Uh, so, director uh, Mickey. Oh, director. yeah, Director Mickey. Yes. So, and he hadn't been around since early days of Hollywood Studios. So they, yeah. had, uh, they had put him back together uh, and given him his outfit uh, mm -hmm. almost specifically for our outing. So... Um, no, it was really amazing. He just went to his closet. There's only one. Stop it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but he had to go take it to the closet and everything. Had to, like had to go and find it, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was us, and I don't know. There was 80 people there, roughly, probably 100 with staff. Uh, so you could, yeah, roughly. So you got to share Mickey with very few people, and we took multiple photos. It's it's so fun to see I Mickey and it. not be rushed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is rare. So how many times fun. did Fig get back in line? Yeah. Three or four. <laughs> all of them. How did I get pictures with Jello Tone? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's very true. Yeah. There are pictures of Director Mickey holding Jello Tony. That is yeah. pretty crazy. And it was very cute. <laughs> and then some of us did after hours uh, that night, mm -hmm. or I can't say after hours. Well, yeah, you're, you're, skipping, you're skipping. You're skipping so much. You're skipping. Well, it is. Wait, what are we skipping? Time. Well, we yeah. had a deli if you're gonna do all the meals, yes, we left we went that. To flying and we had oh, flying fish. fish yeah. It was an amazing yeah. meal. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Does amazing somebody have meal. my picture? A picture of my brother with the steak bone. Oh my no. god. Hey. Oh. Well, I didn't think Jason he had the it. Jason had the steak for two, which was it looked amazing. Jason and I shared the steak for two. Jason did not have the steak for two. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, clarification. It is called the oh, steak for two. Clarification. Yeah. But it was then, amazing. Then we went oh God, to our VIP pass holder event or our VIP ass holder event. There you go. Call it. <laughs> and <laughs> we had a great time. It was fun because we just kind of walked around and there were fans. So if you were a fan, they came and said hi. We took pictures. Thanks for you know saying hi. But uh, yeah, we just walked on to random rides. We did space. There was a mob did... of like 15 WWNT staff roaming the Magic yeah, Kingdom. Yeah, we had a great time. That <laughs> night. 12 yeah. at night. It was fantastic. We, just, we walked on to, what do we do? We did space. We did buzz. We did uh, Big Thunder. Some of us did Big Thunder two or three times. Then another group went and did um, oh, yeah. 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 They yeah, did the, the uh, Haunted Mansion. Mine, the Mine Train. Yeah, Haunted Mansion. Yeah. yeah. 
But it was fun. We got I know for the group I was in for the WWNT staff was that we uh we got to do the Big Thunder where they just say stay on, you could have the last ride of the night. So we got mm-hmm. to do our last night uh, hey. ride again. Um, Rob, you have some good stories from that ride. I think. Yeah, because I, I, I was right behind Pete. Pete was sitting in the car by himself. It was one of my favorite uh, like moments of the whole time because Pete uh, kind of sat sideways in the car and used the time to catch up on all his social media. And so <laughs> as, we're wa- as we're sitting in the car, uh, we're watching Pete, and he's just flying all over the place and, and, and <laughs> with selfies, and he's, and he's checking Facebook, and it was hilariously funny. Um, just because it looked like he was going to fall out like 82 times over. And so uh, follow me on all my socials if you want to see me live from <laughs> Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Oh Did God. you set there me up is. so that I would that you could shill your social media? But Ben's not I think that's, the camera. Exactly uh, what that's the that's worst. illegal. You're I know, horrible. but here's why: I've never promoted my social media, and that's what everyone told me the event was. What are you on social media? And I've never told anyone, so that's why I was going to tell people. Is that tonight? This or you can find me because I always just come on and say I love everything. Wait, what is this picture of the steak? This is just of of the steak for two. I don't have a picture of Jason and the bone, but this is just the steak for two uh, that they're eating, and uh, it was. Cannot recommend enough the steak for two. Yeah, it was you amazing. Go to fish and you have someone with you, and you both like steak. Get that steak for two. I still, don't, I still don't understand the bone though. Like, what? What's the purpose of putting uh, the bone no, on the plate? That's the whole the whole presentation thing. Ah, no, but gotcha. I will say this: Can we all agree on this. Aesthetic. I mean, I'm gonna fight me on this. Um, unless you go to Victorian Alberts, which we'll put in its own category. Flying Fish is either the number one or number two best restaurant on Disney property besides Victorian Alberts. I had never fair. been before this trip, and I would go yeah. back in a heartbeat. Can anyone like, especially fight put me that on next that. to my brown derby experience? Nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, I genuinely regret not being able to make it to Flying Fish. Ben, do you have a special photo? I I do have a photo. This is this is the new thing to do on Buzz, folks. Uh, You you you've Uh tried to hit nine all nines before, but can you hit two five seven? Uh. Why two five seven? (laughs) Well, it. it, I mean, you you got to put up two five and seven. Seven. Yeah, seven. I see. I see. <laughs> uh, let's move on because it's yeah, already way past. Yeah, I have one other, yeah we're going to go way picture. over here. Baby. I have one other picture from that pass holder Aww. thing. I don't know if you can see it, but Ben bought himself a nice Pandora hat, and then he also bought the offering, uh, the dessert offering of the night. So, yeah. uh, you know, we'll shine. <laughs> oh, yeah. It out. was shockingly good. <laughs> ben, I didn't know you, you actually got a, ben, you got a higher score than that. Like, you, you legit, when you were with me, you got a higher score than that. I don't know if you could Right, but the point was to get 257 on purpose. Oh, yeah, like say, if you get there and, and like you stop. stop. Mm-hmm. Because oh. you have to hit 257. Yeah, and Ben's not go thing over is he's under. so ben smug got, about got, the number that he can hit any number he wants to. Ben got, so, <laughs> 665,000. Pointing your bat, right? or you're going to get a home run? Well, Wait, so you know. I, still, like the whole thing with Jill, where she was challenging me, she said, "I swear, I'm going to beat you at this game." And I, for <laughs> sure, I, like, we were all for real, like the, going, "Oh my gosh, she must be so great." And we sat down in the car. She goes, "You know, I suck at this, right?" And I was like, "I didn't know that. I really thought you were just going to beat me at this yeah, game." Totally and so, yeah. Also, and I totally well on the bet, and I still owe Rob a Mickey birthday sipper. And there's the group photo. If you want to switch to my screen, yeah, that's, that's a staff photo there. That's, that's great. That photo. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's on you. It's a ben. little blurry, but yeah. I'm not in that picture because I left uh, to go. Yeah. Change. We'll have to get some of these pictures up on uh, on the website uh, somewhere. Maybe uh, mm-hmm. probably in our Patreon or something like that. All right. So anyway, that was Sunday. Monday is the day of days. Yes. It yeah. was the best day ever. Holy moly. <laughs> Only, uh, oh, I, I think... So I had, um, I'm just going to mention oh, this yeah. briefly. I had an, a really amazing day Monday. Because while y'all went to Typhoon Lagoon, um, I got a chance to oh, visit Lord. Club 33. Nice. <laughs> and holy God, was that cool. Pete, what are you holding on? I was insanely jealous, uh, but oh, that's oh my god! I'm jumping ahead to yeah. Pleasure Beach. If you can get it on the screen. I don't know if you can get yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's up. It's up. But uh, yeah, so you Pleasure Beach. All right, so we had the Adventurers Club reunion, and they would legit. So like, not only were they amazing, but they interacted with everyone around the beach the entire night. Then did a show. We had the original drinks. We had all four original drinks from Pleasure Island. We had um, obviously the Kungaloosh. The, you know, everything else. It was just wild. Like, to have the Adventures Club wandering around, having a good time with all of us, and then to have a show by them, 
to have a countdown to midnight, to have our own fireworks show mm-hmm. on like the water, and we rented out the beach with 300 plus people. Um, staff members stopped by and talked about how amazing it was. Like, you know, cast members, I'm sorry to call them staff. Cast members stopped by. It just was one of those nights you can never recreate. There was perfect weather. The DJ's blasting, fireworks, everyone's having a good time laughing. It was the perfect night. Like, the perfect yeah. night. And everyone else could talk. That I just It's amazing. It was such a good night. It really was. Like, I, I gotta say, I am not the party type. Like, at all. <laughs> Aren't you, though? It's been the contrary. It has been the contrary. He looked like he was enjoying the party. Right, but like I did, I seriously enjoyed this party. Like I, I can't stand loud club atmospheres or anything like that. But this was, this was the nicest, most fun, like party club like thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I, I, this was absolutely terrific. I got a drink spilled on me halfway through the night, and I just didn't even care. I just kept going through it. It was terrific. Ben, I'm right there with you because I'm not a party person. I don't even drink alcohol just out of choice i had two drinks that night <laughs> and my, my partner thomas was like you're like I, I, at one point i just jumped into a group of people and started dancing he's like okay you're officially drunk because you never act like that <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna stay for an hour and then i'll probably just head back because i'm not a party person at one point i'm like Oh, it's the it, I've been here all three and a half hours of this event, and it, mm-hmm. I'm helping pack up. That was crazy. Can I say hey. my favorite thing that happened with the Adventurers Club? Yeah, because they're walk around characters and they're talking. I don't know if anyone else was here when this happened, but basically, I was talking to the butler and the maid character, and I don't know how it came to it, but she said something about being Catholic. I said I was Jewish, and then he said to me, oh, you're one of those Hebrews we've been hearing about. And I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> Followed by him being like, okay, well, uh, this here's a strapping young Hebrew man you can you can start dating. I put my arm around Thomas, and I go, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. And he goes, oh, I see. You're a couple of living bachelors. I get it. And she's like, I don't understand. And I'm like, uh... We're, we're, we're looking for a house together. Oh, we basically boy. had to try to explain to this poor woman that we were gay. And it was the There's funniest thing <laughs> most of the entire club. night. I have most of the Adventures Club there. Let's see if I can bring it up. There, hey, that's uh, a good shot. Let's see if I can get it in frame. Oh, yes, Rob. Also, that happened. Yeah, I was going to say, hey. if we back up a second, the, there was the Canadian meet and greet, or the oh, Canada yeah. meet and greet that Tyler and Thomas put on, which was awesome. It was a whole group of people, and they kind of walked them through some trivia. They all watched, uh, oh, well, Tyler, you can talk about it. Yeah, I, I was not, so our first thing that we ever did last year was like 12 people, and I'm like, oh, okay, these people don't even listen to our podcast. Repeat people from last time came, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess there's like 25 to 30 people that I have to pretend I know what I'm talking about now in front of. Uh, we shared Canada facts and gave away a whole bunch of like free Canada food that we got at the Canada Pavilion, and everyone was super nice and got pins, and we got some good photos and stuff, and yeah, it was a... I was very pleasantly surprised by the amount of people that came to that. It was very validating because we barely get feedback on our podcast, but a lot of people were really enjoying it and said that we were really awesome and fun and stuff. It was sweet. Is there any way to cut to my screen so I can just show another Tyler pic? Yeah, you're up. (laughs) Where did you go? Is that the Hanga Jr.? There's Tyler. Yeah, he skipped ahead again. (laughs) Yep. What what a, what a segue of a picture moving to uh, to Tuesday's game the, Tuesday. the second game the Star game that Wars. almost didn't happen oh my gosh <laughs> Disney security almost thank made you this media happen, day but it worked yep. but it got, worked out there. fine so oh that there we go that's a Make look at rain. this shot <laughs> Pete making it rain inside of oh we Pete had Express. Stu Dio was having a good time oh Stuart I'm sorry Dio. that's Stu yeah I can show off yeah, the money yeah. if you want to put this my is so good on. yeah show that off you're on camera go for it um can you see me I can't yeah see yeah me. you're on okay so this is the front so um the game was starring roles and we had move it up our a little teams. bit make their money, um, make a movie, make their own movie documentary of Hollywood Studios. And so to film each scene, they needed to get props from 
Sid Kahenga Jr., played by Tyler, <laughs> and from Stu Dio, the producer, played yeah, by... Yeah. So the money they got from Stu was our very own WWNT, the $100 bill. Mm-hmm. It's the back. But so all the teams got this to spend on as their film budget, and uh, Pete had some fun with that. So here's Pete. Yeah, yeah, here's Pete. Uh, his, uh, his money, <laughs> what's uh, what's that like quote in case you bucks. can't read it, Jill? On the back of that? The quote is, people can buy Pepsi Cola, but they can't pee in the streets. Which is a, a real quote. It's a real Walt Disney quote. It's a real Walt Disney quote, yeah. Did we have different quotes? So, like, so we did, but it didn't happen. We didn't happen. Rob, what's oh, this okay. picture? Oh my gosh, that's yeah, this, yeah, this is uh, this is Pete in character, making sure to flash all his bucks that he's got while he's sitting wow. around doing nothing, being I, a producer. I need, I need a copy of that. That looks <laughs> that, that might be a terrible. profile picture. That's a great pick. That is a wonderful. It looks like my eyes are to pop out of my head, which is great. That game could have been called The Pete Show, also featuring Tyler, because it was <laughs> like the Pete just, Show featuring Tyler. This big grand character character Pete was playing, and me just trying to keep up. <laughs> I was having fun with it. What can I say? We were in backlot. We we snagged a corner of backlot, mm-hmm. and and Pete is being as loud as though he's a streetmosphere character who belongs there. <laughs> it was so much fun. We're having fun, watch. baby. We're at Disney. We're having fun. So fun. Of course we are. Yeah. Hey, while while we're talking about Pete, can I share the the thing that oh, we were talking no. about? The um, the this was him. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's back. a good picture. Wait, it's actually a video of him sitting there checking all. <laughs> doing his oh, stuff. We have Big Thunder checking Mountain stuff out in Big Thunder Mountain, but it's still in the dark, and he's still just like checking oh, his God. mail and doing whatever uh, all the way through the ride. I, it was it the was original, phenomenal. The original you really had to be so there, funny. though. The original picture is the funniest because we're going up the, the mountain hill. Yeah, like right yeah, here. Yeah, but like you're still. It's like you're I'm just still the whole on time. it. Yeah, just checking. Like you're, it's like out. your office. Yeah, it was nice to be with you guys. I had a, uh, it was fun, but I had to get thing, some things done, you know. Yeah. The bills don't pay them. Shot. So. <laughs> but my favorite, yeah, my favorite is when he does this. Where he does the selfie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. Fun times, fun I times. I think I had the most fun just, like, it wasn't even about going to the parks. It was just about being with all of you. Yeah. More to the point, being mm-hmm. with Tom Corliss while we were going on rides because we everyone was just pointing out things for our lovely weekly report. <laughs> oh, that was, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, oh, boy, do Rob, we have a lot. That's, <laughs> the Rob, one. that's the selfie that I took from that video. <laughs> <laughs> Move that up just a little it. bit, Pete. That is oh, right. that's beautiful. One of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> there's, there's everybody right it's there. Oh, it's good to see both sides. Oh, oh, that was look nice. How, like, sullen Nick looks. You would not know that Nick is on a roller coaster in that picture. <laughs> and that yeah. I feel like overall during the night he was having a good time. <laughs> You wouldn't know it from the picture. I had the best yeah. night with Nicholas Cicero. He came to our hotel room and helped us drink our beer before we left. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Wait, is this post show? Can we do things that are fun and inappropriate? Fun. I mean, yes, definitely we're on YouTube. Keep it limited. Oh, what are you? We're not. Doing? We're not wigs exclusive. So keep your oh, shirt on. Oh wait. All right. Never mind. Yeah. I'm just saying this event was a lot. Oh. Show. This <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if you stand on the projections in just the right way, you can make bad things happen. No, no, this is the picture I meant to show. Is that? Oh, I'm beautiful. sorry. Oh, what was this? They had beautiful lights. Oh, you know, that's, it was oh, there very you nice. It, it was yeah, very it's a nice. Nice little touch. Can I say one more thing nice. about about uh, Pleasure Beach? Because I was really excited about this. Oh, that. This oh yeah, cool. show up. Yeah, really sure. Cool. Yes. And so I got to actually the logo that I made actually got made in, into a pin. And it was pretty much the highlight of my life. Um, awesome. Not gonna lie, it was pretty big. So, and then Pete's got this picture. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm waiting till you're done. No, oh, okay. no, I no, no, no. Um, no but, I mean, we had, me. they we, had other, you. we had other pins that uh, that they were given out, but the, like this one though, this one like like was so awesome, and I was like humbled to see it actually printed, and then to see people excited about getting it was really cool too. We're way over time, but let me just take two minutes to say. <laughs> If you guys have ever loved an amazing image for Park Center or any of our other shows or a great picture, that is Rob and his genius yes. mind. He Tyler, is Tyler's man. Tyler does them too. No, I know. I'm just I'm I Tyler's very good. You're I'm saying enough, Tyler, which one of you did Rob this? is an unsung hero of this entire organization. <laughs> And he's the so man. True. And if you meet him in person, he is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. You just want to so hug true. him, kiss his face. 
He's one of the best. Um, so big shout out to Rob. My entire uh, family adopted Rob. Rob and my yeah, 11 year old. I was an honorary Tiffindal for the weekend and I I was I was just in awe of I, of how nice everybody was at this thing. It was just I mean my I'm niece just, loves you and is still talking about you. Oh <laughs> I do well, have to ask really quick though, which one of you designed this? Rob, was actually, this you too? No, that, that was, was Jackie. Jackie. Oh, it was Jackie? Was that yeah. Jackie? That was Jackie. The infamous magnet. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say, does anybody have the magnet? So uh, there's a good quick story too. Um, we had, I think, 250 of those magnets printed up, maybe more. We might have had 500 actually. I feel like um, we had 500. Yeah, we had to have had 500. Um, so we were giving them out at you know Pleasure Beach and at the um, Imagineer panel event, and then we had a bunch left over. So we took them to studios on the anniversary day on May 1st. And we tweeted out on the WWNC Twitter, hey, come find us in studios and we'll give you a, a free Stage 89 magnet. We ran out by like five o'clock. <laughs> like people, people were tracking us down. Like if you had a WWNC staff badge on, people were coming up to you and being like, are you the people with the magnets? Where are the magnets? Did they I just were, say- like, We caused a sensation. As part of that, if you look at this, this is a picture. The, these Japanese tourists came up because they recognized Tom. They actually got a selfie with him, and then he Ashley gave them a went magnet. Full Japanese in this photo. I did. I was <laughs> laughing hard. No, no, that's not. Okay. No, there she is. Oh. The magnet. And then there was another one where this girl, uh, the girls came up to get a magnet from Fig and wanted to get a selfie with her with the magnet. So uh, that was pretty awesome to see all that. Folks. I yeah. said, I loved mm. meeting your girlfriend. And when she met me, she mm -hmm. was like, oh, my God, I'm excited to meet you. I watch you on Park Center every week. And I was oh. like, oh, my God. Hey, she's a gem. She's she a, a gem. gem. Where's my good fig photos? Because I just <laughs> I mess with fig the entire weekend. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah. Where's Shout our runaway? Fig. Here's our little this is our first parental picture. And then I have runaway ECV. That's yeah. the best picture ever. Yeah, hold on. That's the first one. Oh, Please Rob, you got to find that thing. runaway East. I'm, I'm looking for it. Wait, let me find the other one of uh, Fig and I. It was so much fun. We skipped over Typhoon Lagoon, but you could do that entire park right when it opens. Oh, yeah. In so, an hour. Thing, yeah. <laughs> so we did a Typhoon Lagoon because that, all right, so a lot of things happened in 89. You had Hollywood Studios, Typhoon Lagoon, and Pleasure Beach. Pleasure and Island, sorry. And Dream Flight, of course. Um... So we did a day at Typhoon Lagoon. Not a lot of people showed up. It was mostly staff, but we did the entire park by like, it opened at 10, but we were there at 9.30. We had everything done by 11, maybe 11.30. Yeah. We were done with everything by noon. We were just hanging in the wave pool, and then people slowly started to leave from like 12.30 to 1, because we did everything. We literally did everything as a group. Yep. Um, and, and you know who, who was sure. really curious about Stage 89 was the cast members? And yeah. it was lovely to be able to tell them Oh hey, did you know it's the 30th anniversary of this water park you work at? And they went, no. And I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't. They go. didn't do anything. Nothing really happened this year, is it? <laughs> so I wasn't there for the actual runaway ECV situation, but I think <laughs> oh my god, back, everybody was so excited to want to get this graphic made that uh, oh, I hold on, just, you, you got to tell Wait, the story behind uh, this, folks. Hold I thought on. it was you... just a graphic. There's a story. No, there's the story. There's so a story while he's looking for the picture. So Fig received from Tom a Gelatoni plush. Fig is one of our writers, for the record. Yes, she's one of our and writers. Gelatoni is a and plush. Instagram and yeah. So she brought it with her to the parks. And Pete, oh, there they are together as a happy family. Oh, this was after this was after saying, Runaway yeah. ECV. <laughs> but Pete came up behind her. Was this which day was this, Pete? Was it? Um, oh, so this is the day before the anniversary. So this is yeah, it was uh, the day before the anniversary. Yeah. He came up and kind of you know swiped Gelatoni from her and was <laughs> messing around like he was gonna run away with Gelatoni. Well, I did. And... I felt bad. I hid uh, in a few stores so she couldn't find us. Yeah. Um, but then I swapped her out from a stand. Which, by the way, the cast member, if you're listening, you're the best. He like <laughs> grabbed a plush from a random stand at Hollywood Studios and said. I'm going to leave this gelatoni here as collateral. I need this as a joke. And I started running away <laughs> with another plush. And I left the gelatoni there. And she's like, where's gelatoni? I'm like, I thought this was gelatoni, no? Like, and it was clearly like, 
you know, Monsters, Inc. Or oh, the hell is. that's so, Oh, I'll go back and get it. So I get it. She's like, Peter, stop. No, no, Peter. And <laughs> I grab it. And I see this dude in ECB like like tearing it up. He's got an ungoverned, <laughs> like ready to an go. Ungoverned. He's doing thirty in a in a clear fifteen. So I just tucked Jellatoni's arm in the back of his ECV, like where he could see the back of it, but he has no idea what's happening. He takes <laughs> off. And the rest of us are dying laughing, and her face is like watching a child like drive away in a car into the distance. <laughs> if there were like, ever a like, moment. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. And this guy's doing like 45 at Epcot. <laughs> in his ECV. And I'm like, I don't know what you mean. So finally we got it. And hence it became the runaway ECV with Gelatoni. So uh, it was a lot of fun. And she's a good sport. Shout out to Fig. Without her, with this website would be nothing. She's, she's killing it. So I love Fig. That, that Thanks, and this bro. show, the, the promos for us on uh, on Instagram are super helpful as well. Like, hey, ch- check out our Instagram if you haven't. By the way, it, it is yep. it is doing quite well, and we post a lot on there. It is great mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so that's a great photo. Yeah, this that. picture. Other bloggers we were, were coming we up. We were take... one big happy family to end the trip, though. Just for the record, Hold yeah, on, up there, yeah. yeah, yeah, there. Other bloggers were coming up and taking pictures of one like all the swag that yeah. Tom had on him while he was there for the 30th anniversary. He had all his buttons on. He had his, like, a yeah, so that's jacket. Adam the Woo, and that's yeah. Micah right there. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to those two guys. I watch their vlogs. What's up, yeah. boys? Yeah. They, they came up, and uh, and actually, uh, Tom gave him one of the Roger Rabbit magnets while they were there, too, and so they included it in their their report when they were doing it. So it was neat to Ooh. see like the harmony happening. That what was kind of yoga cool. back there. Yeah, a gymnastic yeah, move. Oh wow, there. look at that! <laughs> yeah, you, you do what you need to for the gram, right? I mean, is that how that works? <laughs> clearly, that guy was in the matrix behind them. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I right there. <laughs> it's not about. how he leaning. It's a matrix right there. Look behind them. The matrix. I want those shorts. They look cool. <laughs> of course, you're looking at shorts. I'm looking at the matrix. <laughs> so we what? kind of morphed into Wednesday here for the 50th anniversary a bit. Um, was it? Did, so there was this presentation and parade that morning. Oof. Who wants to oh. talk about that? Yeah. Um, Don't, anyone but Jill. She's going to lose her shit. Yeah, well, let's, let's... I totally, I lost my shit a little bit at the event. Oh, we can't say so that twice. my 11-year-old you. niece. Would you keep your potty nuts. mouths to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, let, a let's, let's, let's let Nathan, let's let Nathan recap guys nathan you, is a film this professor picture was right after you snuck in line <laughs> that, that oh yeah this picture right here it was uh pete and jason and jill getting swag at the merchandise stand but pete was so upset with that morning whoa, whoa, whoa. that jill <laughs> let him into the line right. and uh, butt in right. front of like half of the park it was Don't amazing about, that pete like not totally talk got about away the dark it. times no one likes me when he's dark let them be. It's true because it went really dark really quickly, and it rebounded really quickly. But it rebounded really quickly. We it did got you back the time. We got you the time you you, we you lost. We saved it. Everything's all good. Sorry, I went a little off the rails, but anyways, (laughs) let's have Nathan, a our resident film professor, talk about. No idea what that has to do with anything. But (laughs) anyway, has to do with everything. Um. So, uh, yeah, we got there early and, uh, well, you didn't have to get there that early because no one showed up, really. Um, and, uh, people showed up. No, beyond people merch, showed up. beyond merch, okay. beyond merch. But they had to go somewhere. Uh, parades and stuff. I, people were I not. I think there were more people in line for May the 4th merch than there were for students. I think that's completely. Ever. Well, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about that. Nothing merch sold quick. out except the pass holder magic band. Yeah, and I think that's – I am very excited to grab a shirt when it comes to the outlets because uh, that's where <laughs> I'm going to be able to get it. Um, these – this – I've been to three of these anniversary events now, Epcot's, Animal Kingdom's, and this one. And this one uh, is not third place. This one is somehow 11th place. I don't know yeah. how that's even <laughs> possible, but Can it was a – terribly put together event um the merch was general and and bland even i mean it was fine if you wanted to get a shirt or something i wanted to commemorate it that's certainly not an issue but it wasn't uh you know they did not care at all uh for 
suggesting any whiff of nostalgia about nope. anything. They didn't want you to remember. Nope. It was such a, a day of, hey, um, why don't we not talk about uh, the last 30 years? Why don't we just talk about what Star Wars is opening? Because um, we don't really want you to think anymore about what this place used to be. Uh, if you think about how Epcot's uh, oh. celebration was, uh, Animal Kingdom a little bit, but Animal Kingdom was has been in such stages uh, of development that, you know, like, and it's still there's really not a young. ton to celebrate the first, you know, the mm-hmm. first year of Animal Kingdom is kind of a tiny baby uh, compared to what it is now. Um, but Epcot's was like, here, here is a mug with all of the signs, uh, mm-hmm. you know, all the symbols on it, and here's all this stuff, and we understand that you love this stuff. Here's a and beautiful it, song. It, 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 they were playing the music in the parks. Hollywood Studios could have not cared less. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Their parade was great terrible oh. um uh, it was not a parade really but uh, th- a cavalcade what we yeah. have determined what we have determined is there was two instances of nostalgia for the entire day uh one was the fact that the first indiana jones who still works for the company uh for the stunt show uh was driving the truck and they acknowledged him and he did a wave which was awesome uh and then there was whole slices of grapefruit cake at brown derby and that was it <laughs> that was it um mm-hmm. it was a terribly put together event the promenade was terrible um the the executives didn't even know how to say runaway railway oh my um, god that was they such, got the name called it runaway horrible. railroad um i don't they're such jokers like i've i i'm so optimistic about a lot of this stuff and i generally you feel like there's a uh, a sheen of corporateness to it but at the same time they generally um, make it feel special. I mean, if you think about Animal Kingdom's uh, event, Joe Rohde was there, um, and and he talked about stuff and was you know he had like he had something to say, right? They weren't selling anything; they were just saying like like we love this park, like you love this park, and that's why we're all here. This was one hundred percent a hey, come for the anniversary, stay for the sales pitch. Um, I mean, it was a travesty of of, yeah. of a program. Uh, to the point where they show off the logo and no one says anything and no one really gives it a cheer. And Jill is in the the very, 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 very front row. Yep. I mean, there is no one mm-hmm. between her and the executives. Nope. And she is giving them a thumbs down yep. very, very aggressively. Yep. Um, no one was Amazing. happy. No, I've um, never, I've never seen something like that where it wasn't even that everybody was like speechless and awestruck. Nobody could everybody have given was- it. <laughs> it was everybody, like this whole if you say something nice, something. don't say anything at all. Right. Like nobody yeah. knew what to do with what was put in front of them. Yeah. And, and, and just disappointed and depressed. That's all we can say about the anniversary day because that's all they did. That's it. That's yeah. it. There was mm-hmm. nothing else. Except for and I want and I want to bring this up, uh the wonderful world of animation <laughs> uh, debuted. <laughs> and I have a review coming out sometime. Um or not. I don't know. I've had it in the in the log for a while, so maybe this pushes it finally out. Um but I have a <laughs> review of uh the show. And it's terrible. That there's really no I way to put it. It's terrible. I- I do like the Sleeping Beauty segment. It's of it. not. No, no it's there's not. there's one or two no, it's not. Uh, no, good. It's not. There's one or two good instances. Sleeping Beauty uh, and another one, and sixty to seventy five percent of it is uh, a living wall of every animated what thing is, you've ever what seen. What is different uh, from this from the one that preceded it? What well, the one that preceded it is Movie Magic, and Movie Magic exactly. found ways to be physical with the the building, Doctor Strange oh, twists and turns God. things. Um, there is a more cohesive narrative. This idea of film, uh, filmmaking, and film genre. Disagree. This they is left out so much. Hero. This is over the place. No, you're you're wrong. I mean, not wrong, but everyone has their own opinion because I'm a very peaceful person. But, but I'm is, saying okay. this and this is this brings it. This brings this really is my job. This really is my job. This brings this brings everyone together. And a show that you have to see more than once, where it forces no. you to come back and see it more no, than once. No, why you no have way. to see it more than once? Because they have <laughs> seventy-five images projecting at the same time. I didn't want to see movie magic. Right. Movie magic was boring it's like as shit. Weird. Movie magic was Call boring. Third party mouth word. Third Sorry. party mouth movie word. Movie magic. Like, hold on, let me show you how exciting movie magic. I don't was. like it when we mom focus and daddy on this? argue. <laughs> this is a glass of water. It's just as exciting as movie magic, because what you say? No, I love, you know, you know, I love Pete, movie magic. But if you put a being spoon louder in a doesn't top, Pete, top. being louder doesn't make you writer. Movie no, magic no, was that's right. not what Dad said. I out in the shed. Dad told me outside. I, I, the I more respectfully powerful. disagree. Um, but anyway, my last point about that show. <laughs> 
what is that uh in the end they uh mickey the the new uh designed mickey comes out um and i love the newly designed mickey and i know that's contentious but i really 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 like it um and i was like gosh that's great and then they show some stuff of mickey and i was like well what if this thing was just a whole show about mickey we could actually celebrate mickey because magic kingdom's not about celebrating mickey he's the mayor um like if this is going to be about the legacy of something let it it be the legacy of mickey this is literally his new home uh, where his right is at like like let's do that and uh instead they get about 15 seconds and by the way everything goes about 15 seconds if you're lucky um even if you love something it's going to blink and you miss it um and and then he's like, but there's more to come. Like, and then drops down and walks into uh, the the Chinese theater. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a this is a commercial. Like this whole thing is a commercial. And that was it, original animation, which yeah. is like happily ever after. They got new, they got people out of retirement to hand draw new animation. Right. And this one had that was it, right? Yeah. Like there was oh, everything absolutely. else was just like a boomerang gif. That Graphic design they too, yeah. edited out, so it's just like clips of so stuff. Of like, and also, why did they play the music without the lyrics? Like, uh, no one knows. Yeah. Uh, it was a very bad. God, part. you know why? All because this the music, music from no, movies that you know and love. Like yeah. I wanted to sing along because... with Moana, like I do it happily ever after, and there was no lyrics. I stay just talk about this from a sound person's perspective. Is that you're seeing six or seven movies at once, depending where you're looking. So if they have lyrics, it's drawing your attention to that one particular movie or scene. So they're not going to put in lyrics. They're going to put in music that's inspiring and giving you chills and but popping you up or letting you down. The that they're showing of course, but they're showing that. six movies at once, depending where you're looking. It's, Which every, is single, it's, it's every single animated movie you've ever seen in the history of Disney. But First of all, <laughs> it is. It's no, every single one. Because yes, I did no, not see not. Song of the South up there at yes, all. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, you, yeah, you, no, you, I didn't know. Oh, one out. note of Zippity Doodah. Yes, yes you did. You saw. You no one saw a black screen. One hundred percent Zippity Doodah was, was represented. Wait, whoa! Is that what you're trying to say? Slightly I'm just saying. Trying to change the topic. Listen, it's so much better than the movie Magic, where they just like that was a forced show. This is a place filler. Don't get me wrong. This is Epcot forever. This is a place filler until they open it up and it's full glory and it's everything's running fine. Everything's, everything's a place. Everything Nothing's open. Running fine. Star Wars. Star Wars is not open. Star Wars is not running with two rides. Neither is, neither is Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. If Hold Launch on. Bay and out. Lightning McQueen is not I'm filler. Not I'm not filler. Really you guys are saying every, you, guys are saying, you guys are saying everything is running. You're missing both Star Wars rides: Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, the new Black Box Theater, the new sit-down restaurant. There's so much coming to Hollywood Studios. There's saying, nothing there. What I'm saying is th- they have no reason to not put a permanent show in. If In fact, they need something right now to get people in, and that would have been a way of doing it. And technically, that's why they did Another this Another show place. is coming. Another I know. Show is coming. So why waste your time on a on a non-permanent sort of Why waste time thing? in Epcot forever and not keep Illuminations for another two years? Uh, that's logistics. That's, that's a legitimate infrastructure issue, that there are yeah. things mm-hmm. for illuminations that are in the way of what they're trying to do for the permanent show. Yeah, but projection yep. mapping issues, are, this, Correct. This, is, yeah. this is just, I, I have no issue with them doing an animated show. This is just a very bad animated show. Better and and not to mention that it, that it ends. But saying it's better than garbage doesn't make it not garbage. See, and I don't think Movie Magic is garbage. I don't think it's the best of the three. I stayed for Star Wars after it was done. Uh, after uh, animation and Star Wars is really cohesive and like it knows what it wants to do and it does some physical effects uh, with the lightsaber at the end and like there's stuff going on and I know that's supposed to be like the big show uh, and movie magic and and animation are supposed to be sort of like the side uh, kind of like opening acts Um, but I just think that movie magic finds ways to be interesting where and and focus your attention where the animation show doesn't it allows you to have longer segments of things like tron and indiana jones um whereas this is you you, basically what this feels like to me in many ways is um it's the leftovers of happily ever after like whatever we didn't do there we'll kind of throw in here uh, and uh, you know what? I would love a forgotten animation. Like, give me a Treasure Planet segment. Give me a yeah. Emperor's New Groove segment, like which nope. they did. Um, yeah. I'm f- that'd be amazing if there was a whole show based on stuff we don't ever see. Um, I think people felt that same way about when Hunchback got a real big placement in Happily Ever After. Um, but the problem is, is they don't find ways to make it 
sprinkle it with stuff that's there also no not Magic Kingdom. No, it and just, there's no, it, yeah, there's nothing it, cohesive. No, it just it felt like how many movies can we fit up here and reference yes. all at one time, and again, and I think part of why I liked again the Sleeping Beauty segment so much, and I enjoy the opening and the closing with Mickey too, but that was because there was one solid thing going yes. on. Yes. Every other time, you had no idea where to look. Yeah. The crap was going on yeah. because it was just stuff thrown up everywhere. They were like, eh, where can we fit it? And it was just everything that they kind of saw a little connection being similar. Let's put it all up there at the same time. And it felt like an absolute mess. Can, well, I, can I just say, though, that since I didn't get to see it, I didn't actually stay for it. I had to get home with these glowing reviews, right. I cannot wait to see it. And I go back, you guys have sold me 100%. Yeah. Rob, you're, actually, actually, you're like me. You'll actually enjoy the show. These guys, look at, what is Nathan like? I mean, I like long all of those novels. Movies. I like long <laughs> novels. I like the movies and, I like and movies. storms and animal kingdom. That's all I do like. like storms and they're not old and gross. Yeah, I don't like things that are old and gross. So that's why I wanted it to be nice and new. And instead, it was basically a cookie cutter. Um, Really, it's, it's it. There are moments, as Jill mentioned, or and Ashley mentioned, I should say, of uh, brilliance, uh, Ember's New Groove, and Sleeping Beauty, and there's one or two of those. But man, it's just it well, at the very fun. worst, you've set my expectations so low. Good, that's that the whatever whole... I see yeah. is going to be amazing. That's... And hey, I can't wait. It, it, it's only going to be the Beverly before you get to have the Fanta melon of Star Wars anyway. So it's that fine. makes a thousand percent sense, actually. <laughs> that is a perfect <laughs> analogy. Yeah. <laughs> so. On, on that note, uh, we we are going to call this show done. I'll be good. Oh, we have a call oh, over a half an hour. Oh. Hour long show. Uh, to, to sum up. Uh, Disney's offerings weren't so great, but what we put out there was far yeah. more enjoyable. <laughs> so if you want Just to ask see, cast <laughs> if you want to see what we're doing next, uh, we are going to be putting out Reflections of Forever, uh, which is the event that we're doing to celebrate the ending of Illuminations Reflections of Earth. It's going to be happening from September 28th through October 1st. We've already got reserved seating for the last showing of Reflections of Earth and the first showing of that, that new Epcot show that is replacing it, Epcot Forever. Uh, so if you are interested in, uh, in joining us for that, which you really should be, uh, go ahead and mark your calendars now. Um, and with that, uh, we are going to close the show out. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us, uh, both those of you still in chat and everybody on this call. Uh, this was uh, sub something new that we hadn't done before, and it was uh, pretty fun to try out. Uh, so th thank you all for coming. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, everyone sing along. Steve Ako! Steve Ako! This is the story of a girl who tried to river around the whole world. Hey, wait. We'll get We're the gonna copyright get... straight. You legitimately will. They'll call it a cover. Yeah. It's wild. Ben, seven people. Is that it? Are we out? See you real soon.